And I can I just check to make sure that um, I have several admissions. Uh, I can't see other people. Oh, there they are. Okay, now they're all coming through. Great. That looks way better. Well, great. Well, my name's uh, Carol Kaminsky, and so I wanted just to welcome you to this uh, just get together really for women who are both in seminary and women who are thinking about seminary. And as we get started, what I thought I'd like to do is uh, I'm going to introduce myself in a moment, but I thought it'd be really fun just to hear a couple of sentences from you. Uh, and this would be, and this is not for people from Gordon Conwell admissions or anything, this is for people who are visiting, who are thinking about seminary, uh, and not for you, Courtney, yet either, because I'm going to introduce you in a few minutes. Uh, so here's what I'd love you to do, just to say one is, where are you from? Where are you Zooming from right now? Um, the second one is, what program are you interested in? And then the third one is, why seminary? Uh, so here's, and this is just a quick, um, you know, couple of sentences and what I'd like you to do is just unmute yourself and just jump in and that would be great. And then I will tell you a little bit about myself and what we're going to do for our time. So who would like to start and anyone can jump in. Just unmute yourself, wave, do something. Well, I'll start. <laughs> I always love breaking the silence on these things. Um, so I am Felicia. I'm from uh, Silicon Valley, California. And I have spoken with someone in admissions. I, this may sound like I'm a little all over the board, but either Old Testament or spiritual formation <laughs> is was what I'm interested in. Um, and why seminary? I got my MDiv about three years ago. Uh, served as a pastor for the last four years, but my heart is um, with Christian education as well mm -hmm. as consulting and um, coaching with church leaders. So that's sort of where the OT and spiritual formation all come together. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks. Wonderful. I'll try, I'll try not to convince you to do the Old Testament because Dr. Adams is not here and in fairness to her. <laughs> you'll take her spiritual formation class and you go oh definitely spiritual formation but then old testament will kind of <laughs> so <clears throat> well that's really is wonderful to hear that and obviously the fact that you've had the mdiv so what program are you thinking about well right now i'm just considering uh the thm and preparation for phd work great wonderful good someone else anyone else I can go. Um, my name is Katie. I'm Zooming from Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, yeah. And I'm considering the Master's in Counseling, uh, yeah. Master's in Christian Counseling. Um, and I think I wanted to get involved in counseling or therapy of some kind professionally for a little while. And I think I've had a lot of good mentors suggest this program and my priest has suggested this program. And so it seems like a really good fit for me. Great. And we certainly have a very strong counseling program. So that's mm -hmm. great to know as well. Mm -hmm. Good. Who else would like to jump in next? I'll jump in. I'm Rebecca. I'm originally from North Carolina, but I'm zooming in from Arizona right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested in the MDiv program. Um, and I've been working in campus ministry, I guess this is my second year. And so yeah. I'm hoping to, once I've kind of finished my uh, campus ministry position to go to seminary, get MDiv and pursue being a pastor. Great. Terrific, thank you. All right, who's next? I'll jump in. Okay. Um, I'm Mary Jo McGowan. Oh. Okay, so we've got Mary Jo. I'm from Charlotte. Yeah. Um, and my other answers are, I don't know. And I don't know. Um, okay. just trying, trying to find out some more information about, um, what people do with these degrees and, um, kind of where the Lord would lead me. I have no idea. Great. And we, we certainly have people who are at seminary who say, I don't know. And that's all part of the journey, right? That the Lord and sometimes when people graduate, I don't know. And I'm like, don't feel under pressure. You just got to wait for the Lord's timing with it to be bold in saying, I don't know. So great. Thanks, Mary Jo. 
Who else would like to jump in? Hello. Yes. Thank you. Oh, okay. My name is Judith Selanga. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm from Nairobi, uh, Kenya. And I would, I would like to join um, the seminary for my master's in uh, counseling. Yeah. And why I want to do this is because uh, I run an orphanage mm. with children who are, you know, orphans and uh, facing very many challenges. And I do not know how to handle them. So mm. I want to know. So that's why I am interested in joining yeah. the seminary to study counseling. Well, wow. help them to help the children and to help the widows. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. And Judy, is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Judy. Thank you. Good. Good. Someone else? Sure, I'll go. Yeah. Hello, everybody. My name is Todd. I'm zooming here from Lakewood, California. Okay. I have to jump off. I have a class to teach. Okay. I'm a biology professor at yep. Southwest Community College. I'm involved with a lot of faith-based organizations. Yeah. Always had an interest in seminary school, especially Bible exegesis. Um, yep. Interested in the Masters of Art in Christian Ministry, specifically the urban ministry focus. Yeah. And um, I've been wanting to be involved in ministry maybe since I was 12 and now I'm mm. slightly older than that. And yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Here I am. So thank you all. That's my, I'm so sorry. Thank you all for allowing me to sit here with you all and learn some things. Great. Would come. So thank you all. All right. all right. Thank you. Good. Others. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> I've been sitting here saying I can hear everybody, but okay. um, I'm Heather Labuddy. I currently live in Hamilton, Massachusetts. And um, I'm very interested in getting into the um, Christian Masters of Counseling. Correct. Uh, Sorry, first name again? Heather. Heather. Yes. Uh, do, you, do you ever have, I, I don't, I think you, our sons may have been friends years ago. It's possible. Robert, yeah, I think. Is it, do you have Kristen? Anyway, well, sorry, we'll talk offline. Definitely, <laughs> anyway, definitely. Counseling? Yes, in counseling, okay. yeah. Great. Very much so, and uh, my, husband, my husband had graduated, uh, don't ask me the year, from seminary with his MDiv, and we're, you're right next door, and I find a lot of what I do on my current job uh, is that I gravitate towards is counseling, and yet there's not enough time to, to do it, and so right. I think it's really what I would rather do. Thanks for doing great, great. this, this uh, Zoom, by the way. Thank you very great. much. Well, it's wonderful to see everyone. Yes. Good. Terrific. Um, someone else. I know we, it'll take a couple of minutes, but it's okay. It's great to hear where people are coming from because there's just a unique background that everyone has and, and it's wonderful to see what God's doing. Mm -hmm. Great. Anyone else would like to say something? I can say something. Um, yeah. My name is Alexis and I actually happen to be on Gordon Conwell's campus right now. I'm having okay. a visit right now in Hamilton. Um, and I'm originally from upstate New York and I'm considering the, the MDiv at Hamilton. Okay. And I missed right. the questions if I, there's anything else I should have shared. No, that's great. That's great. Great. Thanks, Alexis. Good. Someone else? Um, hi. <laughs> I'm Tara Quint. Um, my husband actually graduated from Gordon-Conwell um, two years ago. Yep. And it wasn't until after he had graduated that uh, I started feeling a pull towards seminary as well. Um, my biggest fear was just that I, um, I really struggled in college. <laughs> this is my son. Yeah. I won't be able to stay very long. Um, so I, um, I have always loved communicating and teaching and writing. And I wondered yeah. if there was a way that I could do that. And I've always loved the Lord my whole life. And so um, looking into Christian ministries, maybe spiritual formations or something like that. <laughs> interesting to me. That's great. Spiritual formation is a wonderful degree too. Yep. Yeah. Terrific. 
Hi. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Great. Does anyone else like to jump in who hasn't said something? Great. And, and last last call, everyone doesn't have to say something, but last call if there's anyone else who wants to jump in and then otherwise I'll get us started. Great. Okay. So first of all, uh, let me tell you about a little bit about myself and then I want to share what we'll just do on the call for a few minutes. And I do want to allow enough time for questions because this is really the main purpose is for you to hear a little bit about uh, Gordon Conwell and especially what it's like for women studying at Gordon Conwell. Sorry, Todd, but this is primarily with women. We, I'm sure we could have another Zoom one for guys. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, what it's like for women, because I think there is a unique, uh, there are some differences obviously with women um, and especially as you think about ministry and some of the challenges there. So let me share a few things about myself. So first of all, I've been teaching at Gordon Conwell for the past 20 years uh, and I teach Old Testament. So that's my area. And I originally had gone to Bible college back in Australia, uh, really thought I would just do one year because I love the Lord and I love the scripture and I the scriptures. And I thought, oh, I'll just study for one year, get to know my Bible better. And then that really was the beginning of a journey because there was a Gordon Conwell graduate who was teaching back in Australia. And I just absolutely loved what he was doing in the classroom. And I was like, oh, I haven't heard this kind of thing before. And so then I took another year and then he said, well, if you really want to study the Bible, you got to learn Greek. So I took a, a year of Greek and then I said, I really love the Old Testament. He's like, well, it's, you've got to learn Hebrew then. I'm like, oh, you know, so this was kind of a journey. And then I, um, while I was at Bible college, I had come from a church, a Baptist church, uh, but we'd also had an associate pastor female associate pastor because she'd been actually on Bible translation for like 30 years and she was involved in pastoral ministry so I sort of had grown up with that seeing someone as a woman in leadership and she was the kindest sweetest gentlest lady I could imagine um, and didn't preach very often but she had been in bible translation for like 30 years and was in so so I saw that when I went to bible college I think I started to realize oh there's kind of a whole lot of different views of women and with scripture and so I that was when I started to do some, some of my own study to think, I really need to think through what is God's call in, in terms of what does that mean for me in ministry? So and I want to come back to that in a few minutes. Uh, and then really felt God calling me to, to study overseas, which was coming from Australia. And I knew I wanted to study the Bible. I didn't go into seminary for some kind of long-term ministry goal or career goal but I simply went to seminary because I, I just had a hunger for the scripture and I knew it was something God was doing. Uh, and then the, the professor I went to, um, to ask about it back in Australia. And he said, what do you want to study? And I said, Oh, I want to study the Bible. And he's like, Oh, you've got to go to Gordon Conwell. So that was my, so I ended up, so I've been a student at Gordon Conwell as well. I did the two masters uh, MA. It was um, old Testament and then masters in was um, biblical languages it was the MAR at the time and we moved it then to biblical languages and then I went on to do doctor I was taught back in Australia for six months and then I went to do doctoral work in Cambridge University uh, on Genesis 1 to 11 so that my area is in Genesis 1 to 11. And so let me share a little bit about Gordon Conwell in terms of women. <clears throat> So one of the things you are going to, and I'm sure that you have already come across this, is that we have a whole range of views when it comes to women in ministry. Now, this is, again, and this is what a huge difference with men who are going into ministry because there's not, there's simply the question, has God called you to do this? There's not the question of what can women do and how does this fit for long term? So I want to speak to that for a moment just to share a little bit about who Gordon Conwell is and why I think this is very helpful for us. Because, uh, you know, usually we have schools who are conservative, who think that women shouldn't be in ministry, uh, who are strong complementarian, conservative, high view of scripture, but also um, not wanting to train people for ordained ministry. There's, there's a whole spec schools like that um, I have good friends who teach at schools like that who would not, very good friends, 
who would not have me teach at their school. So there's that group. Then there's another group that are a little bit more on the um, less conservative side that have women teaching and they have women in the full range. There's women going to be in date, but they can be less conservative with scripture. So that's, that's another. So in here's what's so interesting with Gordon Conwell is Gordon Conwell um, has a range of views when it comes to women in ministry. So some faculty member might say that they wouldn't or have a woman as a senior pastor. And you've got other faculty member who say that women could be a senior pastor. And we live, sometimes people say, how do you live in a context where you have different views? And my point is, we hold to the authority of the scripture. Right. And, and this, is, this is what absolutely, and I can say in full transparency, that we do not have issues about women in ministry with each other in terms of some, you know, hidden, you know, angst about it or anything. We really, because we all come to the scripture and we recognize that there are some scripture passages that you can actually come to that and have a come to a different theological outcome. So we have, we, we have a view of inerrancy of scripture and yet we also have are encouraging women for full range of ministry. And that's pretty unique. So I think, therefore, what that means is we are a multi-denominational school, uh, but we, so you're going to have people that come from the full range of ministry, and that impacts women. And let me explain how this is as well. So I know women who have graduated who are senior pastors of a church. I know women who have graduated who have gone on for ordination. I know women who have graduated who have done women's ministry in a huge, you know, a good friend of mine is in a church in Austin, Texas, heading up a large ministry, women's ministry program. I also know women who are more conservative, who would are in denominations that don't think women should be pastors or teaching men and yet have got a full range of ministry with women. So this is the whole range of them within that. Um, I also spoke to someone, oh, probably about a month ago, uh, a graduate of Gordon Conwell, who is heading up the Christian education, senior leadership in her denomination, heading up um, the whole curriculum for the whole country. I mean, so, you know, and this is a Gordon Conwell graduate. And I think why I've seen women move into these different areas of ministry is that, you know, Gordon Conwell, if you do an MDiv, you're required to learn two years of Greek and two years of Hebrew. And so women and men are kind of right side by side in the classroom. And so they, they're equal players at the table in terms of the education process even though some people, some students are going to have different views, that they're coming at it. There's a bonding that happens, I think, with both men and women, that they're coming at it, that we're in the classroom together. And so I think, um, I think that impacts, um, you know, you, you, I, again, I've had friends who have gone to some other schools that are perhaps more conservative with what women are able to do and will feel sometimes that can be restricting. So I think, um, there's, a, there's a high sense of freedom. We obviously have got women in counselling as well. That's a huge area with Gordon Conwell. And so therefore, uh, just as a few examples, we have, um, there are four women who are Old Testament faculty. I mean, you go and go and count that in school. That's, that's really high. And four women who are Old Testament, and we're good friends. <laughs> we know each other well. We're good friends. We have another woman, female faculty, who is a church historian, another female faculty who is an ethics professor, um, who's just a chair, a distinguished chair of an ethics professor. Uh, so, so that kind of influences the whole climate of the um learning environment uh, so that's one of the reasons why i absolutely love it because i'm very conservative myself high view of scripture um, authority holding to inerrancy and yet also recognize uh, that we want to encourage women to follow the calling that god has placed on their lives uh, and and that will be within a range of calling so every faculty member who teaches at Gordon Carmel at a faculty interview someone is going to say regardless of what their view is um, are you committed to train women to pursue the calling that God has placed on their life. And can you do that? And they will say, 
And if that, you know, that's, so that's always every faculty and there's other things that get asked. Do you sign our mission statement, our statement of faith? But one of the questions is always about that as well. And so um, I think that uh, really um, builds confidence in women in for that long-term ministry. So here's what I'd like to do for a few minutes. I'm going to give an opportunity for questions for you. And um, I didn't mention too, we have obviously women in ministry, but we also have women going into doctoral programs. Very common. If you look at a whole list of women who are serving as faculty members, um, they are throughout the country. Uh, I have, again, a number of very good friends who are teaching at other schools, um, faculty professors. I'd love us to do a study and see how many women at Gordon-Conwell have actually gone on to be faculty professors as well. So that's a really interesting conversation. Uh, you of course know Tim Keller, but of course, Kathy Keller is, is having a voice and writing a lot, but she also was a graduate of Gordon Carmel. Sometimes it's just Tim Keller, but no, Kathy Keller was as well. So, oh. so I'd like to leave it open for a couple of questions. And then I, what I'd like to do next is once we've had a few questions, we'll have some more at the end. I want to invite um, Courtney. I'm going to ask her a few questions because she's a current student about to graduate. So first of all, any questions as we get started? And again, just unmute yourself, jump in. If you don't have any, we can move straight to Courtney as well. Uh, I do have hi. one question. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Judy. So, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You, you want me to go ahead? <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. Judy, if you go ahead. Yeah. Yep. Okay, sorry. Um, it's kind of hard to see because I don't see people raising their hands. So yeah. Um, so I, uh, I just have a question. Uh, recently, I have uh, read a professor uh, from other school. Um, she wrote a book, uh, I forgot, but her, <laughs> I forgot the title, but I read it. Uh, it's by Burns. I think her name is something Burns. Uh, oh man, I should have, uh, I should have write the, yep. uh, the book. But uh, anyway, this this lady, uh, she obviously her book is about uh, she's against the complementarism, um, complementarism. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, I wonder how because I know that you said that uh, Gordon Conwell hosts a lot of different views, but uh, because I recently uh, finished reading her book, so yeah, I'm not sure. You know, what is what is the different view on that? I'm sure there are people, she's a Christian, of course, uh, there are people holding that kind of view and there are people, uh, and, but in her book, she seriously criticized complementarism. So uh, yeah, what, how do I evaluate that internal like differences? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what happens in, so the view, the complementarian view, uh, which is, it, it is to do with marriage, but it's also to do with uh, women in ministry. So it's both of those in terms of, um, view of marriage and then uh, there would be more limitations on women in terms of what you can do for particularly for pastoral ministry um, and we have some faculty who are complementarian uh, and, and it's good for you to know that because and we have lots of faculty well I, I think for many of us we really don't like the terms complementarian and egalitarian um, I'm not sure that they're because ultimately male and female are complementing each other. I, my work is in Genesis. So um, what, here's what happens in the classroom. And let me give you an example. Um, I do, my work is in Genesis. And so when it has, when I talk about Genesis chapter three, students are reading the Hebrew text and it says that uh, your desire will be for your husband and he shall rule over you. And so in, that's a great place where there are two different major views and there is a complementarian view and there's more of an egalitarian view. Mm -hmm. So when I'm teaching in class, I will run through the arguments for both sides. And I'll say, here's, here's the argument for, um, let me see what that one is, uh, the making of biblical, okay, yeah. So there's- I, I, I found yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> right, yes. So, so what happens in classes is you are going to get a faculty member who's going to say, here's the main views on this view, and here are the views on this side. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm even a little bit more hesitant with it. And sometimes I go, oh, Dr. Kaminsky, what do you think? What's your view? And I'm like, okay, here's what I think. Here's my view on this. 
but I recognize that I have brothers and sisters who have this view. And what happens when you do work in the original languages is that you understand what the issues are. Now, there are other things uh, where we don't have different views. For example, when it comes to issues about sexuality, um, when it comes to issues of um, Genesis 1, when it says God creates human beings, male and female, I will still talk about some of the different views but that doesn't mean there are different views at Gordon Conwell. No, we all we all hold the same view at Gordon Conwell on that. So, what are the different views that are held at Gordon Conwell? It's to do with women in ministry, baptism, that would be another one, and eschatology. They're really the main ones, and sometimes church polity, but they're the main ones. We have women in ministry, baptism, whether you're infant or or I guess you could put Calvinism and Arminianism. You could add that in there. But they're really, I would think they're about the five main areas where we have differences, uh, that we agree to have differences. But the other areas on, um, there is a lot more, um, we, we, you know, we have the same agreement, we have statements of faith, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to find in the classroom is that a faculty member will be sharing different views and give the argument for it. And you're going to find people in the class have those different views as well. Great. Uh, and there was going to be another question. Yeah, this is probably more of an admissions question. You had mentioned yeah. um, Old Testament, I'm not sorry, Greek and Hebrew, two years of each. If you come from a school with an MDiv that has different requirements, uh, is there something looking at the THM or the uh, PhD program where you'll have to do more work around that if you didn't do two years? That was my question. Yeah, so, we, so when it comes to the THM program, uh, we have a, there is a language competency entrance, uh, but that, that because the reason, here's the reason why, because we're expecting when people come into the THM that they will have a level of Hebrew and, or a level of Greek, depending on what their degree is. But the, the, uh, there are sometimes some courses you can take before coming into that. It might mean that you need an intermediate Hebrew course uh, before doing that and that because those languages are going to be needed for any PhD program in um, biblical studies, whether Old or New Testament. Um, and my, my philosophy is, you know, you're going to be a Christian for the rest of your life. Dig in and do the languages. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. No. And, and we definitely did. It wasn't even like, oh, here's how to use the tools, but they weren't yeah. two years. I did yeah. three semesters of one and two of another. So yeah. that was yeah. how our school was set up. Yeah. So yeah. And what we wasn't... would do, that was great. And no, and what we would do, um, Felicia, is we would look at the admissions department, would look at your transcript. And usually I'm chair of the Bible division. So they would contact me and sometimes we'll say, okay, here's, you, you know, there might be an online Hebrew advanced Hebrew course that you could take. There's something as you um, look at what you've had, but it's really an individual. Uh, okay. They look at the classes, um, but we, we work with that all the time. Okay. You Thank know, you. It, because all the schools are different, you know, and we, we want to just make sure that when you start your classes, that you have enough of the language background that you are going to be able to do well in the program. Great. Other questions? Great, I'm going to lead, uh, turn us over to Courtney. Let me introduce Courtney. Uh, another thing that we do at Gordon Conwell is that we have a Byington program, we call it, which is a teaching assistant program. And we also have a Roselle program. The teaching assistant mm -hmm. program is every faculty member works with a teaching assistant throughout the year. And we also have a Roselle program, which is another kind of mentoring for those who are thinking about PhD programs. Uh, but Courtney was my teaching assistant one year. And I thought it'd be great to hear a little bit from Courtney because uh, she was sitting where you are at one point. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it'd be great to hear a little bit from her about why, how did she decide about Gordon Conwell? What was her experience like as a student? And then, cause she's about to graduate and some fun things are happening. So first of all, Courtney, great to see you. And uh, just if you could share a little bit about um, your decision-making in terms of Gordon Conwell and what were some of the factors for you? 
Absolutely. Thank you. And good to be here. Nice to virtually meet you all. Um, so a bit of background. I am originally from Virginia outside of the DC area. And after my undergrad, which was at Elon University in English, so I had never been in a Christian or religious learning institution at all. Um, and after I graduated from my undergraduate, I did youth ministry for two years full time. And during that time, the Lord continued to kind of stir my heart towards seminary. It had been kind of on my mind for a while. And then my pastor, actually my church, was a Gordon Conwell grad. And mm. so really encouraged me to check it out, connected me with Dr. Kaminsky and with Dr. Petter, another woman professor. Um, That's right. I remember I was, we went for we went for a coffee shop, didn't we, in Hamilton? Yes, yep. we did. We did. Um, and and many of the things that Dr. Kaminsky has said already were the things that drew me to Gordon Conwell. I was excited about learning in a Christian environment. Uh, the idea of studying the Bible academically was totally foreign to me, but incredibly exciting. And I wanted a place that was going to be academically rigorous and academically respected and be spiritually forming. That was my big thing. I said, I wanna to go to a place that's gonna form me as a Christian and form me in my walk with the Lord, as well as challenging me academically. And that's what I found in Gordon Conwell was a place where you have both. So first year I'm taking Hebrew. It is so hard. I'm like, I fail a quiz and I go into Dr. Petter's office. I'm crying. Like I failed this Hebrew quiz. And she prayed for me. Hmm. And this was so foreign to me, you know, no professor in undergrad would pray for me. Um, but that was the kind of community we have where the academics were hard, right? Really hard and challenging in really good ways. And the professors care about you as people and as Christians. So those are some of the things that drew me to Gordon Conwell, the robust MDiv program, which is what I'm in, and uh, the languages, being able to dive into those. They're hard, as you have probably heard, but good and rich. And um, yeah, we're going to be in the Bible our whole lives. So may as well, as Dr. Kamisi said, get in the language. <laughs> so yeah, that's a little bit of why Gordon Conwell. Right. Uh, so what about when you think about your time at Gordon Conwell, uh, you know, what, what has that meant to you in terms of your growth as a, um, for a woman in terms of following the calling God's placed on her life? Um, and maybe just a little bit about friendships as well that have been formed. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Gordon Conwell has been really, really good. You know, we had the pandemic, so that was complicated. <laughs> that was that, like halfway through my time here, but Overall, it has been a wonderful experience to be here. Um, coming into it, I was asking questions about women in ministry also. So I came from a tradition that ordained women, but I kind of was wrestling with the scriptures. Okay, I see these things in the Bible. How do I reconcile that? So that was a big part of, um, especially my first year, was taking classes and diving into the scriptures and seeing what does God say about um, what does the word say about ministry and about me as a woman and what that means and what is God calling me to in particular? Mm. So a lot of experiences I've had here have helped shape that as Dr. Kaminsky said, serving as a Byington for her. Um, we have a church planning program that I was a part of doing internships, um, at different churches and serving in different capacities. And then just the classroom environment itself has been, has been really good. Um, when and what, cam what campus are you on? Uh, Hamilton. Okay. Hamilton. So I'm a residential student in Hamilton campus, and I'm super pro-residential learning. And I know it doesn't work for everyone and everyone's season, but if it's possible, I love living on campus. And I live with um, my roommate, who that's what Dr. Carol was alluding to, who I met here, who's like my best friend in the whole world. And we met here, and that's been a really rich part of this experience as well, is sharing it with um, the community that you have on campus. Mm -hmm. great uh courtney what about i know you were just sharing with this with this uh, with me the other day tell us a little bit about what you're doing now and kind of what your plans are when you graduate and what your plans are yeah so uh this is my fourth year here <laughs> so i'm finishing up this december with the mdiv and there is a program here called the parish pulpit preaching fellowship 
which is a scholarship awarded to um, an MDiv graduate each year to study preaching abroad for a year. So after I graduate, I'll be going um, likely to the UK to study uh, a THM in preaching for a year. And then I'm also in the ordination process um, with the Presbyterian Church to, since my time here, the Lord has really kind of clarified like, yep, pastoral ministry is the thing that I'm calling you to. And so I am in that process with my home church to pursue ordination and be equipped for that. That's wonderful. Very exciting. Um, While I think of it, Sarah, it might be good too to... um, Courtney would never do this, but her sermon that she did for chapel, remember, that'd be a great little sermon just to see, because you did a great job with doing the exegetical, and it's nice to see a woman preaching who's a current student, uh, to maybe to share that with the group. Uh, the other thing I just want to mention, in case I forget, those who are interested in the counselling program, Sarah, maybe you could connect them with uh, Karen Mason, now uh, Dr. Mason, you may have already done that, but um, we've got some wonderful counselling faculty as well. And it might be nice for, even if it's a small group, just to connect um, with, a, with a one or two of these women faculty. So, um, so yeah, it's so exciting to see, obviously, what Courtney's been doing and just the journey that she's been on. I will say that, you know, not everyone knows what they're doing at the end. Mm-hmm. So including both men and women. <laughs> so, you know, there, there's um, sometimes it can take time and we trust the Lord in that process. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you have any questions either for me or for Courtney. Any questions for me or for Courtney? Oh, and I have one other anecdote I can share too if there's no questions, yeah. but Alexis has a question. Hi. So as I mentioned, I am currently on uh, on Hamilton's campus. And during my tour, we passed by the mentored ministry um, office and we talked about that, about internships. Um, as you were, as when you started, Courtney, I'm still wrestling through what what is the role of women and but I am interested in, in the MDiv program um, because of the languages, because of the the just the comprehensive view of of theology and church history and languages, um, but I may not, I, I may not agree with, or I may not want to go into pastoral ministry. And so, those internships um, are there options for women for those mentored ministry internships um, that focus more on teaching but still fulfill the requirements, or, or focus more on different areas? Just talk about that a little bit. That's a great question. Long story or short answers, yes. Um, more extensive answer. So, and they've also changed this, changed the process, but there are several different opportunities that can be used for mentored ministry. So serving as a Greek TA is one way that you can fulfill some of your mentored ministry. And I believe um, if you talk with a mentored ministry office and say, hey, you know, my sense of calling is really in this direction. Can mm-hmm. I do my mentored ministry in here? They will work with you on that. Um, You can also serve in a non-pastoral capacity in a church. So my first internship was more with youth and and women. That was my first church internship. So that's one option as well. Also college ministry is something folks do. I know a girl who, a female student who worked primarily with college students at Gordon. Um, So working with the women students there. So there are definitely ways to do it um, where you're serving within kind of the framework of what you sense God calling you to. Um, OMPs is the other one, Overseas Missions Practicum Experiences, which are like six or eight week um, mission abroad experiences. Those can also count for mentor ministry. Thank you. That's super helpful. Ah, for sure. Great. Other, uh, other questions? I was looking up the Roselle program, but I'm not sure if I'm spelling it correctly. Yeah. Uh, I can send you the link. Yeah. Okay, great. The Roselle program, I'm just starting it. I'm doing it this year. So the Roselle program is involving uh, students who are looking for doctoral programs, and it's in their last year at Gordon-Conwell, and there is... Uh, so there's a high mentorship with a faculty member. So I'm working with um, Melanie this year. She's originally from Argentina. She's looking at doctoral programs. I met with another student yesterday, uh, Miranda, who is working with Dr. Petta for doctoral programs. And so you really, um, there's a kind of a cohort that goes through. 
and the role of the mentor is to help you to um, the role of the mentor is to help you as you're going through application process just a whole series of kind of things that we go through throughout the year with and you're also meeting with other students who are looking at PhD programs and Gordon Conwell I can speak primarily for biblical studies but uh, other faculty would say the same that we have a very high um, acceptance rate of students going into um, doctoral programs and really because I think the emphasis especially for biblical studies I can say the emphasis on the languages and I mean at Gordon Conwell you can learn Akkadian you can learn Ugaritic I mean it's it's crazy that when I was at Cambridge, I took my first year Acadian class had maybe, I don't know, 15 students. My second year class had three students in it. And the third year was three students. I mean, Gordon Conwell can have 15 students or 10 students in Acadian. And it's like, wh where are they coming from? <laughs> you know, um, Aramaic. So there is a little bit of a culture with that. Uh, and the school, you may have already heard about this, the Boston Theological Institute, the BTI, they've just renamed it, but... Uh, as a student, you also can take classes down in Boston, like at Harvard. And so we always try and encourage students to take, um, you know, if you're thinking about doctoral programs, to take a class like a rapid reading Hebrew class there. And usually there's a couple of other students that drive down together and do that. So uh, you're allowed um, a couple of one or two classes per semester as part of your program. Uh, and that is a really nice way to, to get some exposure to some other schools as well. Good. Other questions? Um, hi, um, my name is Julie Alexander. I have a question. Yeah. Um, you mentioned about the mentored ministry. Yeah. Um, I'm also an MDiv um, student um i have about six classes to go um yes. i noticed um within my checklist i didn't see mentored ministry i see i saw field ministry i'm actually a cumin um student so i'm not sure if that's different um to the hamilton campus yeah that's a, that's a great question and you what year are you at gordon conwell well, I've been here since 2000 in okay. Hume. Um, I'm pretty much in the last six classes. I've, I've six more classes to go after these two classes and okay. I'm so completing not, in the fall. Yeah, so I think you probably, um, I'm, I'm not sure the answer to that. I do know that I taught in Boston at Hume for about my first 10 years. Uh, so I'm very familiar with the, the Boston campus, love teaching there. And I know Professor Day well. Uh, so I think I would want, I think you want to go and speak to the registration office in Boston just to find out sometimes some credit may be coming in or I'm not sure how that's working. But I, I think especially now, if you've got six classes to go, uh, you want to make sure that you, you have all that. My experience of people in Boston is they weren't short on ministry. <laughs> so I don't know if that's the same with you, but usually they're heavily involved in ministry, but you want to make sure you're getting credit for that. If you need to get credit for something, you want to make sure you're doing that now. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Great. Any, any other questions? And Sarah, do you have anything else that you would want to add? Sure, yeah, I'm, I'm actually just gonna chat a resource here for everyone. Um, we have a great women at Gordon-Conwell page that if you wanna explore, get to know all of our female faculty members and just take a look and see what resources are available to you as a woman in theological education, um, it's all right there. So happy to, to pass that along. And as well, I, we'll make sure that we send out a recording of this video along with some really good resources, ones that we covered here today and some others that might be helpful as well. So um, yeah, that, that would be my, my biggest suggestion is just, just start making those connections. Our faculty 
here. As you have seen with Dr. Kinsky, always eager to connect and get to know who you are and your journey and how the Lord's called you. And, and so we are happy to help make that connection as well. So feel free to, to visit a campus or just reach out and ask for a phone call. And we're happy, happy to connect you with someone in the field that you're looking to study. Yeah. And I know several said uh, you're interested potentially. We've, I've mentioned the counselling already. Uh, and then uh, if you're in the Charlotte area, there's some wonderful counselling faculty there as well. We've got a great program. And for those who are interested in spiritual formation, Dr. Adams would be the person. And I'm sure that Sarah could connect you with her potential short Zoom meeting or something uh, because uh, she, she's done some wonderful work in spiritual formation and she does a lot of work in narrative story and uh, is just a very well-respected um, faculty member here as well. Well, great. I'm not, uh, it's, it's five to one. Sarah, would you close us in a word of prayer? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. So much. Oh God, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to gather in your name and to explore where you are calling us. Father, I thank you for each and every person on this call. I thank you that you have placed a call in their lives, Lord. And I pray that you would equip them, prepare them, and encourage, encourage them in the call that you've placed there. Father, I, I thank you that you've given us the opportunity to, to be here at this institution that affirms both men and women um, in the place that you have them um, and the ways that you can have them serve in ministry and in academia and in the marketplace, wherever you may call each one of us, we thank you that that we can be equipped to learn. And I just pray for the rest of this day that you would make yourself known to us, make your presence known, and allow us to, to lean into the discernment of your Holy Spirit. Mm. We thank you, Father, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Amen. Well, great. Uh, thanks, Courtney and Sarah. And uh, wonderful to see everyone. And you've got at least you've got the contact with Sarah to reach out if you need some further information. Great. Thank you, Dr. Kaminsky. Okay, great. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you Bye -bye. all.